No, I don't waste no time What's going on guys and welcome back to a new video. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Joshua Daniel George. I own my own social media marketing agency here in the Netherlands called Brandpreneur. And I also have my own coaching slash education business where I teach you guys on how to do the same. And this video was uh, highly requested by someone in the Facebook group, uh, basically about you know how I actually got started in a money online and how my journey has been uh, so far and if i have any plans for the future etc and to be fair i've been waiting to do this video all day long it's now uh, 10 to 8 at night but it's just been so hot in the netherlands that I just didn't have the energy to actually record this video and now it's slowly cooling down a bit. I've got the rest of my to-do list done. So I thought, okay, now just sit down and uh, let's record this video. So my sort of uh, online journey, well, to be fair, my sort of entrepreneurial journey uh, started back when I was in um, basically like sixth form in the UK. Uh, be basically what you go to before you go to uni. Um, what I used to do was I used to purchase um, like the old Apple um, headphones, so with the wire, and not even the ones that look like the AirPods today, but like the actual old school ones. I'll try and get like a, a, a PNG image and have that shown on the screen. Like the, the iPhone 4 headphones, I used, to, I basically I found like an equivalent of Ali uh, AliExpress, which at the time I don't, I don't think existed or I didn't know about it. Um, called sunsky slash online.com and you were able to purchase these um, headphones the apple headphones for one euro and 30 cents uh, for one pair and obviously the more pairs uh, you purchase the cheaper it gets and they used to sell those for anywhere between five to ten euro depending on um, who it was if i knew that person etc but you know i made quite a little uh, you know, small like profit margin with that there, and that was like my sort of first real uh, entrepreneurial venture, if you will. Didn't last too long. I did it for about a year, off and on. And uh, basically, the main thing that sort of held me back there was the fact that I didn't want to uh, order the headphones before and have like a batch in the house. I only ordered the headphones when an order came in, so it was like a sort of drop shipping basically. So an order came in. They pay me the money, and with that money, I basically ordered the headphones, and it took like five, six weeks to come, um, so that it wasn't too efficient. And then obviously, people uh, found out about uh, AliExpress, not AliExpress, but just like these online websites, basically that you can order from China. I did the same with Beats by Dre headphones as well, like the big ones, like not the like the studio ones. Um, I used, I was able to get them for like 40 euros and I used to sell them on for 80 which is still much cheaper than the actual retail price um, and the quality was really good as well like the quality was like probably like almost the same um, sound wise the, the only like difference in quality was the fact that these headphones would break after like six months whereas I'm guessing the actual ones will last a bit longer than that but anyway from there went to uni uh, and then in uni what I used to do is I used to Basically, I used to make summaries of my um, basically lectures and homework, etc. And I used to learn and study for my tests by making a summary. And it actually got to the point where as soon as I created the summary, I no longer really needed to study because while I was creating the summary and figuring out like, what is relevant and what isn't and you know, trying to make it as compact as possible, that for me was the learning phase. So I used to do that for every single subject, every single uh, course, etc. And it got to the point where people were asking me like, okay, creating my own summary is going to take too long, but I, if I can purchase yours online somewhere, or you know, if you could send me your summary, then I'll just learn from that. And I used to put them online um, on like this, basically a website that allows for, um, you know, basically, sharing homework and sharing notes etc called stuvia.nl which is a dutch website um and i earned quite a lot of money with that to be fair um i think it was like a couple hundred a week with uh, when there was tests and then every now and again um i'll, I'll do like anywhere from 10 to 100 um on just like normal um in normal periods basically without any tests within the semester and it's funny thing is i still get people purchasing my summaries to this day and to be fair, that just for me, that's just proof that the education system now is so outdated because they are still teaching 
uh, basically topics and um, you know, information that I got when I was in uni, and this is like five years ago now, they're still using the same books, etc., to this day, and I already thought they were outdated. Like they didn't even, I, I basically did a business degree, uh, business uh, and marketing and economics, basically like a hybrid of the three, and they didn't even mention social media back then. It was all about billboards, flyers, etc. And if they're still teaching that to this day, like that, it, for me, that's just a massive gap in what is relevant now and you know the, the, the curriculum that they're trying to teach. But anyway, from there, I uh, started, or basically, I, you know, f sort of discovered the world of online entrepreneurship. And it was basically through fitness content. I used to watch a lot of Christian Guzman, uh, Rob Lipset um, on YouTube, basically those are two fitness YouTubers, fitness like, vloggers, and they really inspired me to look into uh, you know, lifestyle vlogging and you know, basically how to earn money with YouTube and something that you're passionate about. And for me, the most inspiring thing there was they were literally just going about their day to day. You know, they were not going to a nine to five job. They were not going to an office. They were literally just doing their day to day things. So things that I genuinely enjoy on a daily basis, you know, which is working out, eating healthy, hanging out with friends, etc. And they were earning money in that way. And that really inspired me. And then uh, for those who don't know my story, you know, my uh, granddad passed away and he really got me thinking about, okay, what am I actually doing in my life? Am I actually living life on my own terms? Because that is something that he was, um, a big proponent of of living life on your own terms and not basically taking any notice to what other people think about you and what people say about you um, in a way that you know if people try and get you down you just ignore them not in a uh, a selfish anti-social kind of way but anyway um so the fitness content inspired me to basically look into my own passions and think to myself okay like what do i actually enjoy doing what do i enjoy to do on a daily basis i just want to quickly interrupt this video and basically mention to you guys that i have a free social media marketing course and you can literally download this course if you are subscribed to my YouTube channel. So basically what I've done is I have created a custom audience with Google Ads. Uh, for those of you that are subscribed to my channel and you guys will see a pre-roll advertisement on one of my videos where I basically give you the direct link to download this course. So it's an unpublished link on Teachable which you will only see if you are subscribed to my channel. So if you want a free social media marketing course, all you need to do is subscribe to my channel and then you will see my advertisements. So without further ado, let's hop back into the video. This And is there a way that I can create like a sort of brand around that? And at the time it was fitness, that was a very big thing in my life. Uh, it still is to be fair. Um, I'm not as sort of like passionate as I was back then. Um, it was one of them where because it was all new to me and I wanted to know like the secret to, to get in like a six pack and stuff like that. Like I was just consuming so much fitness content. I was always trying to find like the newest, best way to, uh, you know, basically aim for progressive overload, you know, what things to eat, etc. And now I've sort of, I understand it all, so I'm not as passionate about it. Um, but back then that was literally just my entire life, just working out, um, you know, basically meal preps and eating every so many hours, like, you know, every single sort of like fitness guru myth I used to follow and basically test out for myself. I literally went from eating six small meals a day to try and keep that metabolism up and, up and running, that shit like that. Like at the time I literally believed all that to be true. Then I went to like the sort of like the keto body diet where I did, um, intermittent fasting, etc. But anyway, um, you know, to wrap all this up, because I am rambling on here, I created my own fitness brand called JD Fitness. And basically what I used to do there was I used to give out fitness coaching. So I used to create meal plans, 12-week uh, meal plans and fitness plans for people that were interested in it um, and that basically wanted to also, um, you know, get their desired physique without, you know, having the limitations of, like I said, you know, having to eat chicken and rice every other hour of the day etc so i used to basically uh, incorporate what they had you know what their life was like on a day-to-day -day basis what they actually enjoyed eating etc and i basically did a if it fits your macros approach um to you know helping them get their physique and i did that for a while i didn't earn a lot of money with it gotta be honest it's not something that is sustainable it was literally maybe a hundred euros a month at like tops like that's if someone actually purchased the program i charged um, I think it was it was 60 euros for 12 week plans. So that's like five euros a week, which is madness when I think about it now. But at the time I was in uni, I was just testing the waters. I was trying to figure out, you know, how can I earn money from this? And I was, I didn't fully understand the fact that YouTubers 
didn't necessarily earn money from YouTube itself, it was about the stuff that they promoted. And in my eyes, I thought, okay, YouTube's gonna be the big money maker, and I can just do this on the side and to have content to promote and to also help more people do um, you know, what they, but you know, basically you know, reach their physique while doing what they love, etc. And from there, I finished uni, realized that, okay, this fitness stuff, is, it's good, but you know, it's not something that I'm entirely passionate about because people that I was coaching were sort of still stuck in that like nine to five, not living life on your own terms kind of vibe where they would literally not stick to their diet because they were ashamed of what others might say uh, to them. You know, for example, if they don't want to drink alcohol of a weekend, etc. So because I was still in uni, my target audience was students and people like around my age. And like I said, you know, they would not, um, they would not stick to their diet for weekends because they were scared of what their friends would say about them not having six beers of a night or, you know, not, um, Parthian because you know it doesn't fit in their macros etc so I basically couldn't really help them because there was still something holding them back and you know that's just something that I could not break through because they saw that you know they needed to figure that out for themselves and then I basically realized that okay maybe I should be teaching people fitness I should be teaching people more on how to live life on your own terms and lifestyle design and that sort of sparked the idea of okay then I need to you know, go down that route. But for me to teach that, I also need to discover you know, what, is, what is it that drives me? How do I design my own life? And then I made that transition from, okay, maybe fitness is not necessarily what I enjoy doing. I enjoy doing it myself, but not necessarily the teaching of it. And like I said, you know, trying to break down those barriers for people um, in terms of lifestyle design. So then I thought, okay, well then we'll move to something a little bit more uh, B2B, you know, um, in terms of content creation. So that was like the next next step. Um, I still did this under the JD Fitness brand, uh, but this was the time where Brandpreneur slowly started emerging. I basically wanted to help um, entrepreneurs build out a brand online the way I did with JD Fitness because that is one thing that I did do right back then was I grew my Instagram account uh, from zero to, I think it was like zero to 10,000 followers organically just through posting just by using hashtags. Uh, by the way, this was like before the algorithm sort of limited everyone's reach, uh, but I did that organically, zero to 10,000 followers. Um, I built up my YouTube to, I think from zero to 1,000 followers uh, or YouTube subscribers in a year. Again, no paid ads, no collaborations or anything like that. I did two collaborations, I think, with people that had less subscribers than me, so it didn't really help. Um, so all organic, and um, like I said, I enjoyed that. I really did enjoy creating content. So I thought, okay, then if I enjoy that, if that is my sort of lifestyle design, then you know, let's try and help other people do that. So that is how Brandpreneur sort of came about. And at the time, Brandpreneur was still content creation. So I used to literally just travel uh, within Holland, obviously not, not nowhere far. I used to travel around the country and record promo videos, small advertisements uh, for corporations. And um, this was probably like the most enjoyable time of like this whole like, entrepreneurial venture. Why? It's like almost a, the naivety of um, you thinking everything is possible and that this is basically going to break out, help you break out of the nine to five. And in a way it was sort of like the foundation, but I was still trading my time for money. I was charging little to nothing for these videos. Like I would charge 200 to 400 euros uh, per video, which would literally take me an entire day to record. I had to travel there and I had to, it took another day to edit, etc. And I used to literally say to them, like, until you are hundred percent satisfied, I will not take your money. So I used to charge them after I sent the video and they could literally request like five, six um, edits and, and you know feedback rounds before they were actually satisfied with the video. And obviously big businesses took advantage of that, etc. And we had one company, uh, it, was like, it was like a cherry picker company and they did not pay me for months because every single time I sent the invoice, they said, oh, hang on, I want you to change one more thing. And this, like I said, went on for months. And then uh, they actually came back to me a few months after that original video and said, you know, um, we would like to work together with you again. And I actually refused and said, you know, no, I'm actually too busy with other projects. And that, that, that felt like, that was like, for me, that was like such a good feeling to be able to turn down someone because I was busy working on another passion project of mine, which actually was like Brampaneer, the agency. Um, so I went from uh, basically like small time, like little hustles, 
um, in sixth form to a online business in uni, which was JD Fitness. And then once I graduated uni, I um, basically turned JD Fitness into a content creation business. And then I switched the name from JD Fitness to Brand Paneer. And from there, I did content creation, realized that I was still trading my time for money and I wanted to basically um, no longer do that. So I actually stopped the content creation. I then went to social media management. And like around this time, I also had a part-time job in the gym. I used to literally like do like boot camp like workouts, you know, in group form. Um, I used to clean all the equipment as well. And um, I was just like an all-round fitness instructor basically. Um, so I also, for, for those that are interested, I've actually got like the, what is it, like certificates, like the, the, the diplomas for uh, all-round fitness instructor. Um, I had to get that as well. I actually spent my content creation money on the fitness instructor course um, and then basically became a part-time fitness instructor. And then uh, while I was doing that, I basically made the switch from content creation to social media management because then I could basically have social media management clients um, running in the background, creating like the basically the ongoing retainers, and then I could uh, work part time in the gym to fund other courses, coaching, and diplomas, etc., that I wanted to get um, in order to basically continue that progression of um, you know self help, self development, etc. So from the social media management uh, part of Brampaneer, I discovered that there is no real ROI for these clients. You know, it's hard to keep a client for a longer period of time if you are just posting on their socials. There is no direct ROI for them. And that is when I realized that, okay, if I really wanna continue with the social media marketing, social media management um, business model, I will need to find a way to actually earn these businesses and clients money. And that is how I discovered uh, basically Facebook advertising. And around that time, I got in contact with you know a few other people in the industry. Uh, Quentin Yovan from Choose Christine, uh, Bradley Riley um, was another very big help with with all of this. You know, we ended up working together for you know the, almost I think it was like more than a year actually. Um, we, we ended up you know building up Brampaneer uh, with the two of us, and we you know sort of like understood the whole business model that you know you can actually camera actually just died there but that you can actually you know offer facebook ads as a service but you don't necessarily need to run the facebook ads yourself you know you can actually build out the team to do this for you so we understood that okay if we want to continue with uh, social media marketing or that's basically smma um we would need to find something that will actually give the clients a return on investment which was facebook ads we did not know how to run facebook ads so we found people that were much better than us at facebook ads to do the fulfillment of it and that's how we sort of build up built up the agency um to you know um we built up the agency to six figures within 14 days and then from there i think the most we ever earned with the agency at back then was i think we had like a 20k month and that was like that's where it sort of like capped off um like from there we realized that okay um what we what we understood then or what we basically realized was that yes we were getting a lot of clients you know, a lot of clients coming in through the front end but they were leaving as well after like i think the lifetime value of our client back then was like five six months um which means that after five six months the clients would get dissatisfied and leave and from there i realized that okay if i really want to scale this we need to keep that back door shut we need to actually um you know give them a good return on investment rather than running Facebook ads uh, and then outsourcing it to freelancers. And then uh, around that time, um, basically Bradley focused on other passion projects. I continued with the agency and um, I then realized that, okay, if I want to continue with this, I will need to learn Facebook ads myself. I got an extremely big client, which is far too big for me looking back uh, with a 10K a month retainer. Uh, we hired office space because we wanted to basically sort of be in-house with them. Uh, we hired office space in their building. Um, and from there, I literally, my, my expertise in Facebook ads, if it was at a five out of 10, I literally went from five out of 10 to nine out of 10 in terms of expertise and knowledge with Facebook ads. And now the way the ANC is structured is cause now I have Elliot, who is the head of operations as well. He works for me full time. Um, which is also my first full-time employee. Other than that, I also, I've always worked with freelancers. And um, what we, the way it's structured now is that Elliot manages the front end. So we have, obviously we've got our automated email um, outreach system that we've put in place. Elliot manages all of that. And he is also basically 
Um, he manages the, the second pillar, which is sales. So he makes sure that um, the clients that we do get in contact with are a good fit. I will hop on sales calls every now and again. Sometimes I will do outreach myself as well. Um, you know, basically old clients, referrals, uh, people within my network, you know, I'll get on a call um, and basically, you know, help out where I can. But the way it's sort of shifting towards now is that I'm very much on the back end. I will do the fulfillment. I will run the Facebook ads. Um, I will, you know, obviously I'm at the top, so I oversee all of the pillars and, you know, all of the, um, you know, the services that we offer, etc. Um, so basically I oversee the outreach, make sure that is all streamlined. I oversee the sales, you know, are we hitting our sales numbers? Um, I will oversee the, basically the, what's it like the project development, if you will, make sure that the clients are happy and then the fulfillment, um, which is done by me personally. So I'm working in the business, if you will, in terms of the fulfillment and the Facebook ads, and then on the business when I oversee the other uh, pillars. And why I've done this, because I want to become an expert at Facebook advertising. I uh, want to basically be a 10 out of 10 in terms of knowledge and expertise. And then I want to train my own team on uh, how to run these ads for these clients. And I think this, for me, is the best way of doing it rather than finding an outsourcer for cheap from a third world country to do this uh, on my behalf. I would rather train people in house to actually do a very good job at it. And uh, like I said, the only way for me to train a, uh, someone up to do a really good job at it is if I am an expert myself. And um, some of you might not agree with sort of my method or my vision in terms of that, but it's just, you know, it, I enjoy it and for me it works. So that is basically what I'm working on now. Uh, for those of you that are in the coaching program, you will also know about the Brand Paneer Fulfillment Center, uh, where we basically you know, offer a white label service to anyone that is in the coaching. So if you get a client, if you're in the coaching, you get a client um, and you do not feel comfortable with your own media buyer or you haven't found the right media buyer for the job, etc. as well, you can basically outsource it to our white label service, uh, which is again, done by me and my own team. So. Uh, that is the way it's structured now and that is basically how, I've, how i got started with everything you know um as you can see it's sort of like i'll try something out i'll fail um i'll learn from it and i'll move on and i'll adapt and i'll pivot and i'm guessing that you know it will continue to be like this for a very long time um you know it's it's i'm constantly learning constantly adapting and you know where i was six months ago is not where i am today and i'm guessing that six months from now i'll look back and think you know what was i talking about back then you know i've gained so much knowledge and experience you know it, it all goes so fast and that's why i love uh, online entrepreneurship and um just just the whole structure and the way everything is now you know i'm, I'm, in, I'm in a good spot i'm in a good place and uh, i'm just really enjoying the journey and in terms of because you know it, obviously that's the agency side of it in terms of the coaching uh, that is basically one of my recent projects so towards the end of 2019 i came to the realization that i was very much focused on myself um it was all about money you know scaling up the agency scaling up the business um you know like i said i had the office i had the employee uh, well, I had, you know, I, I hired my first in-house employee, etc. And I look back to where it all started and where it all began. It was basically teaching people how to live life on their own terms. So I literally went like right back to the start and saw that, you know, uh, where it all began was offering coaching for the, the fitness and, you know, teaching people how to live life on their own terms. I noticed that I wasn't as motivated with the YouTube content either because it was like, like I said, it was all about me. It was all about, you know, okay, how can I skill this business? And I forgot that what actually brought me a lot of fulfillment was the coaching and helping people out. And I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't have help from others that were top of their field. Um, like I said, I owe a lot of my journey to uh, Bradley, who, like I said, I, we worked together for uh, over a year. Quentin and Jovan, you know, shout out to those guys. Those guys probably helped me even more. You know, those they showed me funnels and ways of thinking that I would never have basically have discovered on my own, you know, that's just amazing. Um, people that I speak to every now and again, Ryan Wegner, uh, Miro Salim, you know, for those of you that are familiar with those guys, Aaron Kaiser, again, you know, probably one of the best media buyers on the planet at the moment. Uh, Akash, Joshi, you know, uh, if you're watching this, shout out to you, bro. Like, you know, these people I basically speak to on a regular basis that really have helped me out, really have showed me what it's like, you know, or what it can be like, um, you know, if I take the next step and if I, you know, make the next sort of pivot and uh, alteration to my business, etc. And, you know, I know how powerful it is to have someone that is just that one step further than you. So that is basically, you know, what I wanted to give back as well. And that's basically why I started the coaching to help 
people get up to that next level and to you know build out the agency and, and push push forward because it's, it's so much easier to have someone on your side to help you and show you how to do it than it is to try and figure it all out on your own so uh, that is why i basically went 360 and went back to the coaching as well um it's coaching is still relatively small you know it's not not major not big we've got i think we've got like under uh, i think we've got 30 students now we uh, hit the 30 mark sort of like this week so 30 students pay a monthly subscription you can pay it all off in one go um, you get the coaching, you get the course, you get the weekly live calls, etc. Uh, but obviously, you know the agency is the big money maker still, uh, very much. And um, it's it's there's not necessarily one thing that I enjoy over the other. What I have come to realize is that I enjoy the building of everything. So I enjoy building out the agency. I enjoy building out the coaching. And now you know the coaching is up and running. It's uh, you know I get uh, I'm starting to run ads, but I'm getting a lot of a lot of the pages will come organically, and. I'm already looking now, okay, what is the next step? How can I scale this? How can I build out the coaching even more? Do I need to build out more courses or do I need to build out a funnel on the front end to drive more traffic, etc.? And that is what I enjoy most, you know, is building. It's like playing Lego, but then with business, you know, it's 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 great. So anyway, that's that's basically how I've come to sort of earn money online. Uh, for those of you, because that's another question I got, for those of you that are wondering how much I earn with YouTube, it's not a lot. Like literally, like the amount of time and effort I put into YouTube uh, like direct AdSense, I think it's like three, four hundred a month, something like that. And that's only like the last few months. Like before that, it was even less. Um, so it's not a lot. But the great thing about YouTube is that it creates um, awareness for my coaching. It's created like a sort of personal brand for myself. Um, I have gotten a few clients, like SMA clients, from my videos. Um, and like I said, you know, it's a it's a great way to promote the coaching as well. So that's basically what how YouTube sort of comes into play there. Um, and I just like documenting the journey. You know, it's just great to look back at old videos, travel videos, etc. Um, so yeah, that's another reason why I'm doing YouTube as well. But anyway, I'm gonna wrap up this video, guys, because this has been quite a long video for something that is quite a small topic. All I needed to say was, okay, I did this, this, and this. But um, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got some out of it. Leave a comment down below what you'd like to see from this channel next. Subscribe to the channel for more. I'll see you guys in the next video.